بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد على آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين In the name of Allah the compassionate the merciful This is our ninth session and this is based on lesson six of the Book Philosophical Instructions by Ayatollah Misbah Yazdi. This lesson regards definition of philosophy and its subject matter and some other related issues. So the title is What is Philosophy? The author starts with a discussion about the relation between the subject matter and problems. If we consider a science, a discipline, as a set of propositions which are related to each other, so we have a subject matter for that science or discipline, and we have some number of problems. We mean here about problems, m the propositions, belonging to that discipline. For example, if you have philosophy, then you have several philosophical problems, several philosophical propositions that you have in philosophy. Of course, when you say problem, you refer to the mental aspect of it. When you say proposition, Maybe you refer to the mental, or you may just refer to the linguistic aspect of it. Anyway, there are many, many things that you discuss in philosophy. These are problems which are discussed in philosophy. And you have also a subject matter for philosophy. Now we want to see what is the relation between subject matter and problems. Of course, in the previous session, we had a short discussion about this. but. Now the author wants to explore on, uh, explore more and elaborate more on this issue. According to what we said before, each science may have a subject matter which is like a whole, and then it has several parts, or maybe like a universal which has several particulars. So, for example, in the case of medicine, if you consider its subject matter human body, then you can have different parts of human body as subject matters for its problems and also for derivative sciences that may become into existence uh, by dividing medicine into several derivative disciplines. But in the case of, for example, um, philosophy, you have existence as its subject matter and then different forms of existence, not different parts of existence, because existence has no part, but different forms, different sorts, different types of existence as mm, subjects of philosophical problems. So this is something which you already know and it's not new for you. What is important here is that a subject matter may be considered as an absolute concept or as a limited and restricted concept. And in this way, it may become subject matter for different disciplines. For example, if you consider matter, physical matter, what we call it uh, al -madda, if you consider physical matter absolutely, without being restricted to any form of physical matter, this can be discussed in a, a special science, a special discipline, which is different when you limit and restrict matter into its particular 
forms or sorts. For example, the author says that you may have this matter discussed in respect to its uh, intrinsic qualities and the way that it may be combined or analyzed and so on. So this is the way that we discuss matter in chemistry. But you may discuss matter in another way in physics. For example, when you uh, want to uh, study the changes, the apparent changes, the physical changes that happen to the matter and the movements, the motions that may occur to the matter. So the matter from one aspect may be discussed in chemistry, from another aspect may be discussed in physics. But if you want to have matter without any limitation, without any restriction, just discuss generally, very generally about matter. That is another discipline. This is a third discipline, which is more general than physics or chemistry. For example, in the uh, philosophical works, what was the conventional and the ordinary way of dividing the sciences which are related to matter was to say that we have matter as a general subject matter for natural sciences without uh, limiting that. So matter absolutely, matter without limit. This was the general topic for natural sciences, for tabi'iyat. Then matter with limitation was subject matter of physics, chemistry, uh, zoology, botany, and so on. And there is still another way, and that is to say absolute matter. Not matter absolutely and not limited forms of matter. Absolute matter, which was discussed in a science which was called Sama'a Tabi'i or Sam'ul Qiyan, which means elementary natural science or uh, natural science related to the uh, Qiyan. Qiyan sometimes means astronomy, but uh, sometimes means also the cosmos, which, which means world. So it's a form of cosmology. Anyway, this Sama'a Tabi'i or Sama'ul Qiyan was a title given by philosophers to a study of absolute math. So now you have become familiar with two ways the term absolute may be used. Sometimes you say absolute A and sometimes else you say A absolutely. And these are totally different. For example, if we say being absolutely, it means that any form of being, whether limited or unlimited, whether finite or infinite, all beings. But if you say absolute being, it means being without limitation. Absolute being is different from limited beings. But being absolutely can uh, be applied to limited beings and unlimited beings. Okay? So, if for example, another example. If you say man, human being, absolutely. So, I am included. You are included. Everyone is included. Whether young or old, whether white or black or green or yellow, male or female, all are included under man absolutely. Human being absolutely. 
If you say old man, young man, so it's not possible to include other forms of man. So this is limited form of man. But if we say absolute man, this is neither man absolutely nor limited form of man. When we say absolute man, here we have taken absoluteness as a limitation. So absolute man is neither me nor you because we are not absolute. Absolute man means to have the concept of man without anything added to it, which does not exist, of course, outside. This is something that we can only imagine uh, in our mind. Outside, you have always man with something, with some qualities, with some additions. But having absolute man outside is not possible without any addition. Of course, you can uh, extract, you can uh, make, uh, remove all those uh, additions and consider it as absolute man. But in reality, there is nothing as absolute man separately, independently outside. Anyway, now let's go back to our own uh, discipline that is philosophy in philosophy which I mean metaphysics in philosophy we are concerned with being not in a limited form we are not concerned with for example um, being in the way which is discussed in mathematics or in the way which is discussed in chemistry or astronomy or economics or physics. No. We talk about being as such, about being without any limit. So general qualities of being are our concerns. So we discuss about being as such or being qua being. Or you could say we study general problems, general qualities of existence. Okay, so this is something which is very important. You may ask me, do you discuss in philosophy about absolute being or about being absolutely? This is something that you may ask me. So the answer is, if you mean by philosophy, metaphysics, which is related to all forms of being, which is not limited to any form of being. So we are not just talking about absolute being, which is God the Almighty. We are talking about being absolutely. It means that all forms of being are included in the subject matter of our discipline. But if you mean by absolute being, a being which is not limited, so I can accept that philosophy studies about absolute being. So this is very important to uh, 